Coming up on episode 174 of Creative Writing, I'm talking about writing to market and writing to trend. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have kept me up again. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing. This is the podcast for you, an author who wants to sell more books without being smarmy. And I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant. I'm so glad that you're here, whether this is your first or 174th time to listen to the show. It's always just something great for me to know that people are out there listening and to look at those download numbers, which I don't do a lot, just like I don't look at page views a lot in terms of a metric to feel like I'm successful. But when I look at those numbers, when I'm usually uploading the next episode, I'm like, hey, people, you're out there, you're listening. And I'm really, really happy about it. And I also love to know. So feel free to connect with me. You can tweet me at Kiki Mojo or head over to the free Facebook community, createifwriting.com slash community. And today we're going to get into something that has been talked about a lot. And I just keep hearing people discuss it. I'm going to give kind of my take on it or sort of like me breaking down what other people who kind of coined some of these terms have said about things uh, regarding writing to market and also writing to trend and kind of how those are similar, different and what it actually means. And I'll share some examples of what that looked like in my writing career over the past 18 months in terms of writing to market versus writing to trend. So if you want the show notes for this, I'm going to have a lot of links that I'm going to drop in there to things other people have said. Sometimes I like to share things that other people have said that disagree with me because I don't know everything and it's nice to get different voices and hear because not everything is going to work for you. There are very few things that I will say categorically you have to do it this way. There are a lot of things that I will say it's probably better if you do it this way. If you are trying to make money independently publishing your books, then writing to market is something that's pretty important to know. It's the best intentional way. People find success accidentally sometimes Um, they might've accidentally done something correct or they just accidentally had something happen. Um, But if you're trying to do it intentionally, this is really important. So you can go again to creativewriting.com slash 174 for episode 174. Are you ready to get into this? I don't like to waste a lot of time at the beginning. Let's just get into writing to market and writing to trend. And I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time, especially when I was putting together a slideshow for a presentation I did for one of the local Houston writers groups. And I realized exactly the impact that it had for me writing to market and writing to trend. So let me kind of get into these definitions. Now, I will say I spent time Googling it and then I got tired. I don't know if Chris Fox coined the term right to market or if he capitalized on it and wrote the book on it. But the term right to market is very often associated with Chris Fox. And if you actually go Google Right to Market, you'll find his name and posts about him, posts from him and his book called Right to Market. I'll link to a bunch of that stuff again in the show notes. Um, But essentially, uh, well, let me tell you first how often writers get started. This is how I got started. As a writer, as a child and as an adult in grad school, I would write the stories that came into my head. I would write stories that I was passionate about, stories where the characters started to speak to me and I could envision them and I saw the arc of their story and their, you know, just the plot, all the things I wanted to tell or I had an image and I wanted to tell that story and put those things to words. Often that's where we start as writers, which is great. That can absolutely make you money. That can sell books, especially if you are a good storyteller and can craft these stories Um, into a novel that has things it needs, like beginning, middles, and ends, and character development and all of those things. But in the current landscape of today, um, if you're trying to publish independently specifically, writing to market's really important. And even if you're trying to get a traditional deal, it's also important because if you're just writing, well, so say you're on your heart as a vampire story. I love vampire stories. They will always be in my heart, just FYI, my market and my mind, vampires all the time, um, which may surprise you knowing I write clean romance, but I love vampires. So, uh, but if you happen to be pitching your vampire story, which you've been passionate about for years and you did it like the six months or a year after Twilight released, publishers were going to say no because the hot period had already passed because it takes so long for things to publish. Yes, vampires were popular 
they come and go. Um, never for me, obviously, but they do come and go. But if you're choosing to try to write them when they're already hot, it takes publishers so long to get things out that it, it wouldn't work for you. So in some ways, you do need to know or at least be aware of this if you're trying to publish traditionally. So what exactly is right to market? And this is my definition um, of how I think of it in my head. So writing to market is shifting that focus from you, the author, and the story you just want to tell in your heart to the reader and what the readers are looking for. Now, those two things don't have to be mutually ex exclusive, but you're putting that reader first. And so what that means is you're going out, because I'm sure you're like, well, how do you know? Well, you're going out and you're doing some research on what is selling. And you're seeing what the readers are showing you they want by where they're putting their dollars and what books they're purchasing. What does the reader want? And again, we all want to tell stories um, that readers want. We all want our words to be read by people. We may have different monetary goals or goals for fame, fortune, you know, being well known, selling a certain number of books. But ultimately, we're writing for ourselves, but we're also writing for those readers. Because as a writer, as an author, there's nothing like having someone send you a message or pull you aside in person or tweet at you and say how much they loved your book or write a review. All those things are so amazing because we want to tell our stories. And if we didn't want other people to read them, we'd put them in our diary and shut it and put it on the shelf in our office, um, which is somehow how it feels when you're trying to publish traditionally and no one buys your book. You've got your, I've got a couple of those books sitting in a shelf. They're in like a Word document printed out. So we all want to have stories that readers want, but writing to market is really taking a look at the actual market, what is selling now, and then writing according to that. And this is, as I said, easier and something that needs to be more of a focus for indie authors because we have the time to publish quickly. I shared with you guys a couple episodes ago how um, I went from an idea to publishing the very first book in just over 30 days. We're putting out the second book like next week. Um, and so I'm, <laughs> we're finishing that right now. Um, but you know, so within, I saw a hot trend, which is the academy trend in paranormal, young adult and new adult. Um, and we wrote a book really fast and got it out there to market. It's doing well, not as well as I want because I'm a perfectionist, but it's doing well for an unknown pair of people <laughs> just putting a book out there. It's doing well. Um, that's something we can do as indies. We can be a little bit more quick and nimble like Vanilla Ice, getting our stuff out there where traditionally you can't because it takes years. I mean, the waiting process alone just to try to get an agent or get an agent to get publishers to look at it can be forever. So you really don't have as much luxury in there. Okay, enough about that. So that's what writing to market is essentially. You're studying what readers are buying right now and you're writing books within there. Now, here's the thing. Well, I want to talk for a minute about what right to market isn't because I know the arguments, I've read the arguments, and I've even had them in my own head. A lot of people think that what this means is you don't have to write a good book. You don't have to write a book you want. You just pick what's selling and you do that. And they can, people, a lot of people, maybe you're even listening, might consider that selling out. And I want to talk about why it's not and why I found, I personally have found so much joy in writing to market. Uh, but I do want to say writing to market is not selling out. Now, it could be maybe for you writing to market would be selling out that there, maybe there's some people that sell out. But I think we'd have to really examine what does selling out actually mean? Um, because if you need to put food on the table, are you selling out if you write what people <laughs> want to read? Um, if you like vampires more than <laughs> um, clean romance, but clean romance is selling, but you write a vampire novel or you write whatever's hotter, are you selling out? I don't know. That's really not for us to say, is it? It's kind of like the person has to know that in their own head. That's really, I just don't know if we can make that judgment call about people. So in general, how do we know if someone's selling out? But it doesn't have to mean that for you. I think the way that writing to market works best is when you're finding things that are selling, finding what readers want, and then writing a story that you love, finding the intersection of what you love and what people are buying. And that is writing to market. Um, that's how I consider it. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So as long as you're okay with your choices, then go on with your bad self. That does not make you a sellout to do that. It does not make you a sellout either. And I've said this before, if you're writing to make money, writing has been a profession for a very long time. Yes, it's creative. Yes, there's art to it. But making money with your writing is not selling out and neither is writing to market. Maybe it could be, so could writing for money, but it doesn't mean it is. And we can't make that judgment call for other people, just yourself. Okay, so that's my big caveat to that is it also doesn't mean you can just write whatever you want. Now, I will say 
I read a lot and I've read some really great books that are in some of these hot markets and hot trends. And I've also read some really bad books that are doing well. Um, you like to think that the best rises to the top and good books rise to the top. Sometimes they do and sometimes terrible books sell and we just have to get over it. I read a book, well, I skimmed through because I started a book today and I hated it so much. I skimmed through to find the ending because once I'm in, I'm kind of hooked, but it was terrible, you guys. And I just, I went and looked and, and the reviews are all like five-star reviews, verified purchases, people who've actually bought it and they really love it. So you know what? Somebody's really happy they read that book, but I thought it was terrible. So a lot of it's subjective too. Um, but when it comes to this whole situation, it's really about looking at what's selling, finding what you love, the intersection of those, and then being able to live with yourself. And we all have different goals. If your goal, again, is to put food on the table for your family and pay the mortgage, then this is going to look really different than if you're writing just your passion projects and it's nothing to do with income at all. Totally different things. So I want to talk about what writing to trend is. And this is something I've kind of heard people talk about. I don't know... Um, if people have coined this term, if it's being talked about, and again, I didn't have time to go Google it, but I've heard people talking around this idea and I'm gonna kind of show what this means to me and how I've seen it. So writing to market is a big umbrella. Let's think of it like that. You're looking at a, an overall, and I'm gonna use clean romance as an example at first because I have a great example from uh, my Emma St. Clair pen name. So when I wanted to write Emma St. Clair, I didn't do enough research at first, but I did enough and started out and got better as I went with my covers and, and knowing the tropes and the expectations of readers, the more I was immersed in reading what people were buying. So I was reading all of those independently published books from, you know, I don't consider them my competitors, but the people that I want my book up alongside theirs on those bestseller lists on Amazon. I was reading a lot of those books and finding the big umbrella that's clean romance. Clean romance is a pretty big genre. Um, the clean and wholesome romance category on Amazon is highly, highly competitive, super competitive. There's a lot of books in there, including um, traditional authors like Nicholas Sparks, who would say his book isn't romance, but whatever, it's in that category. There's love stories in his books, even if people might die. Spoiler alert. Um, I haven't really read his books, but I know that's something that happens in them. Um, so writing to market's the big umbrella. You know the overall expectations of the readers. You know what the covers look like. You know what kinds of story arcs they're expecting. You know what kind of characters they're expecting. You know price points, length, all of those things are things that you study when you're writing to market. Now, writing to trend, to me, is taking those principles of writing to market and you're applying them to a particular niche, genre, or a trend that is hot right now. And uh, so as an example of that, I talked about the Academy books that I'm writing. Right so I've been noticing the Academy trend, which really I feel like it, it's not these things are not always really like new, 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 because Harry Potter, if you think about it, is really a paranormal academy, right? Young adult book, he goes off to the magical academy. And that's what a lot of these books are, is they have this essence of Harry Potter where there's students going off to train in their magic and various things that they're doing. And so I noticed this was a hot trend. I just saw it. I wasn't necessarily planning to write in it until I woke up one day and had a story. But it's something that may be around for a while, but right now there are tons and tons of these books out. And uh, when for, to go back to the clean romance, I have the clean romance umbrella. And when I started writing, I wrote a couple of books in there. And then I started noticing this trend where everybody was writing billionaire books. And they still kind of are. But back then, they were they were starting to do really well, but there weren't a ton of them. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I don't like this trend. <laughs> just a confession. I didn't like that. I don't really care about money so much. Um, that's just not something that matters that much to me and uh, or being super wealthy. I don't see that attraction as much. I didn't like the trope as much, but I was reading a lot of these books. And one day I woke up with an idea for a billionaire book that kind of turned, or a couple actually ideas, that kind of turned the idea on its head. And I wrote it and I loved it and I published it. And what I found out after I published it, and I'll have a screenshot I'll put in there, but in three weeks, my billionaire book, the one billionaire book that I did, um, more than four times the sales of a book that I'd written and published three months before. So three weeks to three months at four times the sales in terms of book sales. Um, the numbers here, let me give this to you. So it was three weeks and it made $1,300, sold 705 copies and had 253,000 pages read. The next book, which was from three months before, had made not quite $600 sold 156 copies and had 83,000 page read. Uh, the one from the month before I launched the billionaire book 
had made almost $300. So I was making around 300 a month um, with the other books. And then this one made 1300 in three weeks. So that's the power of a, of a hot niche, of a hot trend, of writing to trend. It was something that was hot then. And I've seen over time, this is on the decline. For me, uh, my billionaire books, I kind of peaked with, I think like book three and four sold the most money. So my month um, where I've had the most income, which was January, and I talked about that, I think in episode 150, where I made almost $9,000. That was my fourth billionaire book. It came out in December and then continued to sell really, really well in January and all my books did. But as I continued to write billionaire books, they're going down a little. They're not as hot. They still sell better because I've released some other books that are not billionaire books. They still sell better than some of the other books. Um, but it's not as hot as it was. And it also may be but because so many people saw that it was hot. There are just so many billion, there are billions of billionaire books out there. But that's the difference between writing to market. So it was written to market, it was a clean romance, but it was written to a particular trend that was hot. And I was able to get it out in a period of time that kept it inside of that window because you don't know how long things are gonna be hot. So right now, as I have been writing and recording this, there's a hot trend in romance for what's called bully romance. And it's not something I love. I might have mentioned it here before. I've talked about it in some presentations because it's really interesting to watch. I don't really like it. Overall, what it is is um, a girl falls in love with a guy who humiliates and bullies her. Usually it's high school. Um, Sometimes it's a little out of high school because some of the books are very steamy in terms of their content. Um, And again, this is not something I really want to like to or have read. Um, I've read like snippets of some books just to get an idea because I wanted to see what exactly they were. And now I know (laughs) and it's not something I love. Um, But these are super, super hot and they're everywhere, especially in particular reader groups that I'm in. Obviously not clean. I don't see this happening in clean romance. I don't think it would really work there. It's sort of an extreme of the enemies to lover lover trope um, in romance. But that's a really hot trend right now. And there are people making, I just hand over fist, dollars, 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 because there's a hungry readership for this. Um, You know, again, the Paranormal Academy, I mentioned that, that that, those might sell a lot. Paranormal books in general, people really like those. But right now this Academy trend is very hot and there's tons and tons of Academy books. Who knows how long these trends will last? Who knows how well my billionaire books or my academy books will sell in three years? How strong are they going to be in my backlist? I'm not sure. It's hard to say. So it can be a little bit risky. I've actually read some backlash a lot, actually, about <laughs> against billionaire books. I mentioned I don't really love them, but the, I was reading on a page from uh, somebody who runs like a reading page about books, and she was saying um, she wouldn't even read a book by an author if the author ever wrote a billionaire book. She just would write that entire author off because they had written a billionaire book, which I find ridiculous, but hey, to each their own. (laughs) So there can be backlash against these trends. And sometimes a hot trend actually creates a new one. So clean romance actually kind of came when the pendulum started swinging back from the 50 shades to gray, which is completely on the other side of the pendulum for um, clean romance. And clean romance really kind of came about after that, sort of, I I do think it's a reaction to that. Sometimes we have this big swinging pendulum. I don't think people, the human race is really very good at like moderation. (laughs) So sometimes you'll see one trend that's in one extreme and then it swings the other way. Um, Not that people aren't still reading Fifty Shades to Grey and those kinds of books they are, but it created kind of a resulting trend that kind of grew up out of that and became even more popular because of that. Um, or maybe impacted, maybe not, I doubt it, nothing is really solely because of one thing, Um, maybe some things are, but most things are not solely one factor, but that was for sure a factor in the rise of clean romance. Um, So with writing to, writing to market, even though you're writing to what readers want, it's, I can say that's a big broad umbrella, where writing to hot trends is something that's going to be a little bit more flash in the pan, it's a little bit more risky, if you don't get your book out, and I've, I've seen this happen with people that they, like, okay, here's a trend. They take six months to write it and the book doesn't sell as well as if they had done it quicker. So writing to trend is almost like a tiny portion. It fits under the umbrella of the market, but it's faster and it could be a little bit more timely or run out um, and then you might be in trouble. So how do you find hot trends in markets? Well, um, I am going to share some links to a video from the Writing Gals and some other things in there that you can look at. But 
It can take some time. I think the more time you spend on Amazon looking in niches that you like, again, you want to be writing probably things that you like and enjoy, or you're going to just really be sad at the end of the day. So looking in these different niches and starting to see like, okay, Amazon, those those uh, bestseller lists, they change hourly, just FYI. But if you keep an eye on them, you know, look every day, just glance at the top 20 books. Um, in a couple of the genres that you like and see what's selling, see what's selling consistently over time, see if things start to pop up. And then when you want to write that kind of book, you want to look at covers, titles, publishers. And, and just so you know, if you're doing this research, it matters whether you're researching a traditionally published author who can get away with being a lot more outside the market because they have the push of traditional backing and advertising. Um, than the people who are indies. So if you're independently publishing, you really do want to look at what the indies are doing because those are the people who are able to make it work without those dollars. They may have their own advertising dollars, but it is certainly not what you're going to have if you're with one of the big five. Look at the themes, look at the the tropes or conventions within there. So, um, you know, like in a billionaire book, often the most common is you've got a rich guy and a poor girl and there's sort of that flip there. Um, not always, because my bill and her books mostly are not like that. Um, so you can flip things on their head a little bit inside of that. Um, but if your covers and things like that, you know, you've got to signal to the readers, this book fits into this thing that you're looking for. And then as long as you generally fit inside of those, like the, hitting the main points, um, you're going to be okay. But it doesn't have to be super specific, but you need to pay attention. Settings, conventions, keywords, pricing, descriptions, all those little things matter. Um, what are the top 20 books in a category doing in terms of those things? And you can look at a category to see how hot it is to see what the rank of the top book is and then the rank of the 20th book. So if all of the top 20 are in, you know, under 10,000 in the Amazon store, it's probably a lot more competitive, especially if the first couple books in the top 20 are under the top 1,000. It's a pretty competitive category. But if it drops off a lot more quickly, um, you might have more room to you know, get higher up in the ranking, which can mean more visibility for people looking in those categories. So I've got some posts and things that you can look at. Um, Klytics is a great resource for that. Um, I actually started writing Clean Romance after using Publisher Rocket, formerly called KDP Rocket, from Dave Chesson over at Kindle Panor, and I was researching Christmas keywords and kept running into romance. And so I actually decided to go ahead after seeing all these Hallmark movies and these different things and this trend going on, that's when I decided to write Clean Romance. It was selling. I thought I could write it. I didn't think I'd enjoy it that much, but I was trying to make money, which is okay too. And now I'm doing it sort of for the money, but a lot more for the enjoyment. I'm still trying to make money, but I actually enjoy um, this writing to market that I didn't expect to enjoy as much. So if you're hanging out in other author groups as well by genre, you're gonna to start to see what kind of trends are emerging. So I'm in a lot of newsletter swap groups where authors say, hey, here's my book coming out. Does anyone wanna you know, email their people about it? I'll email your book. And you can start to see the book covers and the trends that authors um, you know, what books they're actually writing or, you know, in some of the just author groups, like there's academy author groups, there's paranormal romance author groups and people, authors talk to each other about what they're doing. And that's another good way to kind of see what, what is coming down the pipes. You might be able to hop on a trend earlier if you see a lot of big authors suddenly starting to write a particular type of romance. So when people started to see some big authors in the romance kind of section doing these bully romances, they exploded because the the authors who are more kind of in the middle saw the big authors doing it, knew it would take off and do that. So some tips for this. So if um, you're thinking about writing to market or writing to trend, I will say that if you're thinking about writing to market, the demand is going to be bigger um, or the demand for bigger niches, the overall bigger umbrella is going to be more long lasting. So I've already looked at my billionaire books and thought about you know, can I rebrand these in a few years, give them new names and new covers? If billionaire books, if the backlash becomes bigger, where people are more and more people are saying, I won't read a billionaire book. My books, it doesn't have to, I mean, the guys can be rich in them. It doesn't have to focus on that because those books, again, I didn't like that convention of just having a rich guy, poor girl. I didn't like that. And so my books, and not to say all billionaire books are like that, uh, but could I rebrand them? Uh, because sometimes the writing to trend, the things, you know, they may go away and then you're going to look kind of dated. So clean romance overall will be around billionaire books. Mm, not sure, so sure about that. Um, the Paranormal Academy books, I'm not, you know, same thing. I think that they, again, the idea of, of kids going off to boarding school of some kind and having magic and those things, those are always 
um, going to be read by people. There's a lot of people who, like me who love reading about vampires and some of these paranormal things, but they may not always be as hot as the Academy um, is right now. Uh, so these are things that you can consider. If you're chasing a hot trend, the books will have more longevity, more of a lifespan if they can fit a broader market or serve those readers, serve the same readers or serve readers when it's not a hot trend, um, or if there's a way that you can repackage it. Because sometimes, you know, I, I have shared this a couple times in the podcast when I wrote a bride's book for a series with a group of authors and it wasn't selling. I was able to repackage the book, same book inside, but I repackaged it, um, called it Managing the Rockstar, and it sold, put a guy on the cover instead of a bride, and it sold more copies. So same book inside, um, didn't change anything really other than the cover and the name. The, the blurb, I shifted a little bit to focus more on the aspect of him being a rock star, but, but the story was really still the same. It was just the packaging that was signaling to the readers, hey, you might have missed this book. It's really good. Uh, for those of you who are looking for this kind of book, it could have fit either title, could have fit either cover, but I went with the one that sold more. So considering, you know, could a rebrand be in your future? And as an indie author, again, I really love the fact that I had the control to do that. And one day I was able to make the changes. Had tip to Bobby Bird for getting me a new cover in three hours when I suddenly was like, I need a new cover today. Um, and so super, super to have friends like that that can help you or be able to know people who can help you. Um, but overall, that's my sort of explanation for writing to trend and writing to market. It's not necessarily the exact one that Chris Fox uses. I do have his book and have looked at it. It's been a long time. I've heard a lot about this and seen how other people do it and describe it. So this is my way of describing it. You've got the big umbrella of writing to market, the littler umbrella of writing to trend that may wash out a little bit sooner. But as long as you're fitting that big overall writing to market in a bigger genre, you may be able to repackage it later. So that's something to consider. So if you're wanting to do this, if you're wanting to write to market and find a way to write something that you love within a market that's selling well, spend some time in Amazon. Um, spend some time specifically in the categories that you enjoy, that you find joy writing or reading. I, I don't always read in the genres I write. I mean, I do to research, but so I enjoy a lot of genres. So you can write and read wherever. But if you're going to try to figure out what to write, hang out in the places that you want to write, hang out with those authors and author groups, see what is coming down the pipes in terms of the trend. Because if you're trying to make money, if you're trying to establish yourself faster, um, I share that example, you know, my book that was written to a particular trend outsold the other books, you know, hand over fist and, and still does outsell those books. So that's something that's important to think about. Um, overall, it's still written to the clean and wholesome market, but it's within that hot trend that's now waning away. Um, so is this right for you? I don't know, but I hope this gives you a starting point to consider how this might work for you. And you might actually, like, like I found, you might find yourself surprised in how much you like a genre that you, know, you may not have considered writing in. I never would have thought about writing in romance. In fact, I'm sure some of my friends were like, what is wrong with you? Because this is not your thing and it's not, um, but it is now. And I really enjoy it. I'm happily surprised. And you may start writing in a genre and really hate it. Um, and so that's something to consider too. Then you have to go back to your why. Is it for the love or is it for the love and also the money? Um, and then you can make your decision accordingly. So there you go. Head over to the show notes, creativewriting.com slash 174, where you can find links and tips and more um, to help you out if you're considering writing to market or writing to trend. But just to encourage you guys, every writer's journey is not the same. Our reasons are not the same. And you can't tell if somebody else is a sellout from the outside. We can only know that really about ourselves. And so um, this is up to you. If you want to do it this way, great. If you don't, great. But this is not something bad. Um, if you're coming from a traditional background like I was, this sounds like poison. It sounds like just the worst thing ever. Um, and I'll tell you, hey, I've got an MFA. I come from a very literary background. I love literary fiction and I'm okay with this. So you can be too, but it doesn't mean you have to write it either, but it's something to consider. And I hope I've given you some tools to do that. If you guys want to hear about new podcast episodes, get resources, tools, and more, you can sign up for the weekly quick fix, which is my email that goes out on Fridays, creativewriting.com forward slash quick fix. Uh, you can also head over to our wonderful free community, which is at creativewriting.com slash community. Very easy to remember. 
Thank you so much to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the tunes you are hearing right now on the show. She's an independent artist living in California. She is epic. So if you have a chance to go see her or head over to her website and listen to more of her music, she is phenomenal. And I am just thankful to have her music on the show. I'm also thankful to you, the listener, an author who wants to sell more books without being smarmy. I have to keep saying the tagline a lot because it's new and so I'm getting used to saying it. But the way I end the show is always the same. It's time for you to go out and create content that you love and serve your people well. I-